To talk about atomic adsorption spectroscopy or AAS. This is an instrumental technique that we can use to measure the concentrations of specific elements uh, in our samples. And to do this we exploit the fact that atoms don't have vibrational rotational energy levels. What this means is if we look at the energy level diagram for an atom, this is a sodium atom, we have an electron in the 3s orbital. We can excite it to the 3p or the 4p orbital by adsorption of light. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to shine a light onto our atoms and it's going to absorb and go to one of these excited states and we'll measure that absorption. These atomic transitions are very narrow because we don't have rotational or vibrational energy levels in contrast to molecules. Molecular species have the ground electronic and excited electronic state along with multiple vibrational nodes in black above and then rotational nodes in purple. This causes the adsorption profiles to be broad for molecular species. If we look at a typical energy level diagram, here we have a molecular species in green, has a broad profile, but however we have very quantized or discrete transitions for our atoms. In atomic adsorption spectroscopy, we're measuring the adsorbance of light by our atoms of interest. And to do this, we have to take our sample and turn it into a free atom so that it can happen. To do this, we use a nebulizer. We, nebulizer takes our liquid samples and turns it into an aerosol. We mix it with fuel and bring that up into our flame. In the flame we have a combustion area where organic species can be burned off and we can create our free atoms. Our free atoms can then absorb our wavelength of interest from our element specific source. Now I'm going to spend a minute to talk about the flames here. In the flame we have our free atoms. Our free atoms can absorb this light causing a transition from the ground state to the excited state as we outlined earlier. However, our atoms can react with other compounds in the flame to give us molecular species. These might absorb differently. Likewise, our atoms can be ionized, removal of electron to form ionic species, which also will have a different absorption profile. Both of these elements are sources of air, and you want to minimize or control them in a way that you can. So we want our elements to be free atoms so that we can measure them. Typically, temp flame temperature or uh, flame additives is what you can use to control the equilibrium between these compounds. So if we look at our element-specific source, it has one wavelength of interest that we want to measure the adsorption from. We put it through a chopper, and what the chopper does is have that, fl have that light turn on and off at a given rate. We turn it on and off because our flame is a light source itself, and we need to be able to tell when we're measuring light from our sample versus from the flame. So this modulated uh, source now enters our flame where our free atoms will absorb some of that light causing a decrease in the signal. The outside of the flame we have our modulated light our, uh, coming out after the adsorption along with light from the flame as well. We then put this through a wavelength selector where we just want to measure the one specific wavelength of light from our source element. This then goes through a detector where we can amplify it and deconvolve it to figure out what came from our lamp versus what came from the flame. And we use Beer's Law to measure the adsorbance for this system. We measure the power versus the initial power in for our lamp source to relate to measure the adsorbance and this is equal to epsilon BC where epsilon is molar absorptivity, B is my path length and C is my concentration of my free atoms in the flame. I can make a measurement for an unknown and use a calibration curve I generated for strum standards to figure out what my unknown concentration was for my element of interest.